Hello students, I am Professor Avesh Ahmed Husseini, working as Assistant Professor in Mechanical Engineering Department at Sharad Institute of Technology, College of Engineering, Yadra. So students, in this video, we will discuss refrigerants used for vapor compression system. So let us start with the definition of the refrigerant. So as we know that in every application like steam power plant, in hydroelectrical power plant, in gas power plant as well as in HVAC working fluid is mandatory for satisfactory operation of that particular things. So similar way in case of the refrigeration as well as in air conditioning as well as in HVAC the working fluid is must. So the name of that working fluid is that refrigerant. So the refrigerant are the working fluid in refrigeration and air conditioning and heat pumping system they absorb the heat from one area such as an air conditioning space and reject it, it into such a outdoor space used through the evaporation and condensation process. So here the main function in simply way is the main function of the refrigerant is to carry the heat from the one place and uh, dissipate that heat to some other place. So that refrigerant is mostly used in application like refrigeration also it is used in case of that air conditioning also in case of the heat pump that the refrigerant are used so the continuously phase change takes place of that refrigerant in two different process of that vapor compression refrigeration cycle the first is that evaporation process in evaporation process the phase change of that refrigerant from that uh, liquid to vapor or in case of the condensation process the phase change of that refrigerant occur from the vapor to liquid so now how that refrigerant work so basically uh, here uh, this is a simple vapor compression refrigeration system here you will get idea about various components of the wave cr cycle the first is compressor hermetically sealed compressor is there condenser the third one is that expansion wall and uh, last one is that evaporator. So what exactly that uh, refrigerant works? So here uh, you just take example of that particular metering device. That metering device regulate the cooling effect uh, in the lower, se lower section or low temperature line. The low temperature line is that particular expansion region as well as that evaporation region. So whatever the and the vapor refrigerant available at the end of the compressor process it enters in the condenser where latent heat of the condensation takes place and heat is rejected to the atmosphere and here in this particular case the refrigerant change its phase from the vapor to liquid and the same liquid refrigerant is enters in the in the expansion wall so expansion wall is a device it just like a capillary tube sometimes and Nowadays that uh, automatic expansion wall or uh, throttling walls are also used. So the main function of that expansion wall is to allow the throttling action. And uh, when the liquid refrigerant is passes through that uh, throttling device, the, its pressure and temperature again goes down. And finally that liquid refrigerant having the low pressure and low temperature enters in the evaporator. So that actually the evaporator is placed uh, in the room. Suppose the application is that cooling or the heating of the room. So what exactly that evaporator do? The main function of that evaporator it is to absorb the heat from the room uh, and phase change occurs because of the latent heat of the evaporation process and phase change of that refrigerant from the liquid to vapor. Further that vapor refrigerant is enters in the compressor. Whatever the vapor is formed after the evaporation process, it is having some kind of the moisture content or wet contaminant. So when it enters in the compressor, compressor compress that uh, vapor refrigerant at high pressure and temperature and uh, again that wave high pressure, high temperature vapor refrigerant sent to the condenser and this cycle is continuously repeats. So here compressor and condenser is related with the high temperature side component and that expansion wall and that evaporator is related with the low temperature side component. So students, uh, this is the history of the refrigerant in 1830 that uh, refrigerant mostly used co2 nh3 so2 extra in the application of the food preservation as well as in case of that uh, 
uh, application like processing units that first generation refrigeration is there also sometimes that ice plant such kind of the things for example that cold storage also that co2 nh3 and so2 uh, refrigerant are used but now after 1930 up to 1930 the second generation of that refrigerant uh, refrigerant is evolved and hydrocarbon refrigerant now uh, that particular used during uh, this particular era and uh, nh3 that is ammonia is also used water is also used after that in third generation in between that 1950 to 1999 the more focus on that cfc hcfcs nh3 water similar way that co2 is come under the picture for the variety of the application of the food preservation in cold storage in marine application in uh, uh, that refrigeration application mostly used in case of that railways also for domestic purpose some industrial cooling purpose so now the fourth generation is uh, uh, up to that 2010 and uh, here also that uh, hydrocarbons that uh, cfcs hcfcs co2 nh3 and h2 are generally used so uh, so from that 1930 to 2010 there is a very less uh, change in the uh, generation of that refrigerant but after 2010 now uh, today is that 2020 so now uh, most of the that uh, hfc refrigerants are now exhausted and now focus is on that natural refrigerant so we will discuss that natural refrigerant at the end of the uh, that particular uh, presentation so here you will get idea about uh, in different uh, that era in 1834 that co2 nh3 hydrocarbon are generally used as a natural refrigerant now again in 1930 cfcs are also used 1980 hydrofluorofluorocarbons are generally used in 1919 uh, also that hydrofluorocarbons are generally used but here the era from the 2010 the most of that uh, refrigerant are outdated and focus is on that natural refrigerant so here you will get idea about generally we are in 2020 more focus on that uh, natural refrigerant because Uh, it is having very low uh, or almost zero gwp that is global warming potential as well as that ozone depletion potential so now uh, the classification of that refrigerants are there are actually basically two types the first is primary refrigerant and second one is a secondary refrigerant so what is exactly that primary refrigerant so that primary refrigerant is the one kind of the refrigerant can be directly used for the purpose of the refrigeration you just take example of uh, domestic freezer you take example of domestic uh, uh, as well as industrial air conditioning system so in all cases the primary refrigerant is used because it is directly take a part in the cooling application if the refrigerant is allowed to flow freely into the space to be refrigerated and there is a no any danger possible to harm the human being then the primary refrigerant are generally used so all kind of the industrial as well as the domestic application mostly that primary refrigerant are used the refrigerant used in the home refrigerator like freon r12 are primary refrigerant nowadays that r134a refrigerant is used in a primary as a primary refrigerant in the domestic application so this is the best example of the primary refrigerant so now uh, the secondary refrigerant the second refrigerant the best example is a brine and the main function of the secondary refrigerant is to cool the primary refrigerant and then it will responsible for the cooling purpose so the meaning is the primary refrigerant like that brine which is used as a intermediate fluid between the evaporation and the substance or the space to be cooled they cooled the substance and the space by absorbing their sensible heat also called as a indirect evaporation system so generally in case of the ice factory the brine is act as the Uh, secondary refrigerant so whatever the cycle which is uh, thermal cycle in case of the ice plant is there the main working or the primary refrigerant usually is the ammonia and that ammonia uh, is all continuously circulated through the evaporator coil and that evaporator coil is continuously uh, surrounded to the cooling section and the cans is directly inserted into the brine so in this particular case the first that evaporator absorb the heat from the brine and first that brine get cooled and brine is responsible for the producing that ice so this is all about the secondary refrigerant it never directly take a part in the refrigeration or the cooling system first it cool the primary 
condition and then uh, it will uh, used in as a directly as a refrigerant so these are the some desirable properties of good refrigerant so here i listed some thermodynamic properties so whatever the refrigerant are used in the application for domestic as well as for commercial application it should be the low boiling point low freezing point so positive gauge pressure of the condenser and evaporator but not very high high latent heat of the vaporization so also here i discuss some uh, important chemical property like non toxic non inflammable and non explosive non corrosive and chemically stable so here we will take example uh, uh, and discuss the brief about that thermodynamic properties of the refrigerant so the most important thing in case of the thermodynamic property of the refrigerant is boiling and condensing temperature so the boiling and condensing temperature and the pressure the boiling temperature of the refrigerant at the atmospheric pressure should be low so this is the most important thing similar way the evaporator and condensing temperature determine the pressures so the maximum condensing temperature is largely affected by the climatical condition if the boiling temperature of the refrigerant is high at atmospheric pressure then compressor has to operate at a high vacuum so so it is mandatory to whatever the refrigerant is used you should be having that low boiling point similar way the both evaporator and condenser pressure should be positive and it should be near to the atmospheric pressure for satisfactory operation of the refrigeration system so uh, so the next is that chemical property of the refrigerant so the first chemical property of the refrigerant is toxicity the refrigerant should be non toxic but ammonia is a toxic poisonous in nature second one is that flammability the refrigerant should be non flammable but ammonia is a flammable this is again an important thing so the next is that action with the oil so always uh, in case of that vapor compression refrigeration system there is a chances of the mixing of the refrigerant with the oil so it happen in case of the hermetically sealed compressor so the refrigerant which are fully uh, miscible with the oil like r uh, oil like r11 r12 does not create any problem so the now uh, these are the some economic uh, properties i listed here uh, the refrigerant used should be preferably be uh, inexpensive and easily available in the market so this is again important thing as far as that economical property is to be concerned then the next important is leak detection vacuum leak test so whatever the refrigerant is used in the application of that uh, that domestic refrigerator or commercial application it is very easy uh, that a, a leak uh, should be detected so leak may be detected either by pressurizing system and checking for leakage to the outside or by drawing a partial vacuum in the system and then checking for the rise in the pressure on a test gauge so that's uh, why the vacuum method can be indicate if there is a leak but not where it is located a vacuum leak test is normally performed after the pressure testing and repair of the leak has been completed as a final check so here uh, we will discuss the types of the refrigerant so here the primary refrigerant again classified into so many types that is the first is that inorganic inorganic compounds on the basis of that inorganic compounds there are a variety of the applications like ammonia water air carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide these are come under that inorganic compound so students in case of the inorganic compound the refrigerant under the group were universally used for all purposes before the introduction of the halocarbon so they are still used in the different purpose due to their inherent thermodynamic and physical property so it is mostly used in case of the ice pan milk processing units so here that uh, various types of the inorganic compounds that is inorganic refrigerants are there ammonia is there the chemical name is nh3 and the uh, number is de designated by r717 the next is water that is h2o r118 air is represented by the number r729 co2 that is carbon dioxide is represented by the r744 now sulfur dioxide is represented by r764 this is so2 so these is, these are the important inorganic compound mostly used in the ice plant in steam refrigeration system also for aeroplane refrigeration also and ship refrigeration also these inorganic compounds are mostly used now the second important one is the type of uh, the refrigerant is the halo carbon compound this uh, compound is old compound and continuously in uh, from the last uh, 
100 year backs we continuously use that halo carbon refrigerant this group of the refrigerant was invented and developed by carl skating and uh, dr thomas mcley in 1928 these refrigerant are sold in the market under the trade name as a freon so it include refrigerant which contain one or more three halogens chlorine fluorine and bromine atoms so now the most of the refrigerant used for domestic commercial and industrial application are selected from this group due to their outstanding advantage over the refrigerant from other group but there are some limitation like its global warming potential and uh, that uh, particular ozone depletion potential is uh, high so that's why now the such kind of the halo carbon are phase out try to phase out nowadays and generally we are more focus on that natural refrigerant Uh, where the value of that global warming potential and ozone depletion potential is almost zero the list of the halo carbon refrigerant are commonly used are here so these are the important uh, halo carbon refrigerants are available in the market and nowadays also we are generally used in application of domestic as well as commercial application but uh, nowadays we are trying to uh, reduce the use of this halo carbon refrigerant and we are now moving or uh, work work on the natural refrigerant so these are the r11 r12 r13 r21 r22 r30 r40 r113 r114 r114a and r115 these are the important uh, halo carbon refrigerant now are used in the variety of the domestic as well as uh, industrial and commercial applications so the, now the next important is that types of the refrigerant is hydrocarbon refrigerant most of the organic compounds are considered as a refrigerant under this group many hydrocarbons are successfully used as a refrigerant in industrial as well as in commercial application most of them uh, possess satisfactory thermodynamic properties but are highly flammable so this is the main limitation of the Uh, that the hydrocarbon refrigerant so it is not used in the application like uh, chiller application or you can take example of the milk processing uh, units or some kind of the ice factory or cold storage such kind of the refrigerant are not used because of their uh, flammability also it is not not used in the cooling of that refrigeration system or air conditioning system in the aeroplanes as well as ship or marine application so generally that uh, methane ethane and propane these three refrigerant are come under that hydrocarbon refrigerant the name are methane is represented by 50 number now ethane is represented by 100 number and propane is represented by 290 number and these are the chemical formula of the methane ethane and propane so now the next important uh, type of the refrigerant mostly used in the industrial as well as commercial application is that uh, azeotropes refrigerant the refrigerant under this group consist of the mixture of the different refrigerant which do not separate into their compounds with the changes in the pressure or temperature or the both they have fixed a thermodynamic property you just exam you just take example of that uh, halo carbon refrigerant so here in case of that azeotopes these are the combination of the r11 plus r22 or r r12 plus r13 or r12 plus r22 such kind of the combination is there in case of the azeotropes so i repeat once again the refrigerant under this group consists of the mixture of different refrigerant which do not separate into their compound with the change in the pressure as well as temperature of the both so here the mixture of the various uh, refrigerant are used and it act as a azeotrope they have fixed the thermodynamic properties now uh, this particular slide indicate the refrigeration designation all refrigerant are de designated by the r followed by the unique number fully structure halo halogenated compounds these refrigerants are derived from the alkenes such as methanes as well as ethanes these refrigerant are designated by r x y z where r stand for that uh, refrigerant and x stand for the in it indicates that the number of the carbon atom that y indicates the indicates that uh, hydrocarbon and z indicates the number of the fluorine atom so only two digit indicates that the value of the x is zero so the balance indicates the number of the fluorine atom so this is this is the designation through which we can uh, 
designate that particular refri refrigerant used in the application of the refrigeration as well as air conditioning. Now the most important point on this particular slide is natural refrigerant used in the air conditioning system. So nowadays uh, most of the refrigerant from the all previous categories are going to be phased out. Now our intention is to use that natural refrigerant because it is totally environmental friendly so there is no any harmful effect to the environment as well as to society or living organisms similar way its global warming potential and ozone depletion potential is almost zero so what are the natural refrigerant so chemical it is a chemical which occurs in the nature's biochemical process so these refrigerant are formed uh, because of that formation of that natural biochemical process can be used as a cooling agent in the refrigerator as well as air conditioner so natural refrigerant nowadays are used in the both application like refrigeration as well as air conditioning so they are uh, formed by the nature's biochemical process so do not deal do not deplete the ozone layer and making uh, negligible contribution to the global warming so i already told that uh, this uh, such kind of the refrigerant is having very less ozone depletion potential as well as the high efficiency so this uh, efficiency of that such kind of the refrigerant is very high and uh, they are used in the variety of the application like commercial as well as domestic and industrial application because their the global warming potential and ozone depletion potential is very very negligible or absolute to zero why use natural refrigerant this is the most important thing natural refrigerant delivers on the montreal and kyoto principles that is protocols natural refrigerant have no or very low global warming potential so that gwp stand for that global warming potential so the value of that natural refrigerant is almost zero related with that global warming potential similarly that uh, zero value of that ozone depletion potential that is odp similar way reduction of the co2 equivalent emission so earlier refrigerant uh, we already discussed uh, that inorganic types organic types azeotrope uh, tribes so uh, chloro uh, hydro chloro uh, types as well as similar with that particular uh, that hydrocarbons types all are having such kind of that co2 emission so after construction industry in case of the refrigeration and air conditioning there is a very chance of the uh, producing of that co2 so it can be reduced in case of that natural refrigerant because that co2 directly affect to the global warming and because of that the temperature of the earth is continuously increase year by year so it can be minimized with the help of that natural refrigerant so these are the some application and limitations uh, of that different variety of that refrigerant or natural refrigerant used in the variety of the application so the first important natural refrigerant is that ammonia so the application is a larger air conditioning system that is chiller we are using that ammonia as a refrigerant then the commercial as well as industrial refrigeration that is cold storage food industries processing industries beverages industries heat extraction ice factories milk processing units everywhere we use that ammonia as a refrigerant but the limitation is ideal and efficient refrigerant is used in the accordance with the natural or the national safety standard and the course of the practice so we must have to follow the standard course of the ishray as well as ashray so this is the most important uh, thing related with the ammonia as a refrigerant similarly as a co2 that is carbon dioxide the the application of that co2 refrigerant is static mobile or air conditioning system warehousing some kind of the cold storage commercial uh, refrigeration system chiller cabinet and ventilation machine similar way that process chilling low and ultra low temperature application so for lower temperature also we use that carbon dioxide as a refrigerant so here in this particular case uh, the limitation is often used as a secondary refrigerant along with the ammonia thereby opening up application where ammonia as a single stage refrigerant would not be applicable so this is the limitation of the carbon dioxide uh, refrigerant the next is hydrocarbon refrigerant the hydrocarbon refrigerant are generally used in the industrial and domestic air conditioning application similar way in, it is used in the commercial application 
so limitation is it is extremely inflammable so it is not used uh, in the application of the aeronautical application and marine application so it is not considered as that natural refrigerant so uh, these are the some benefits of the using that refrigerant so regularity complaints uh, in many countries the use of the availability of the hydrochlorofluorocarbons and h uh, h fcs are controlled by uh, legislation due to that their environmental impact so most of the countries that ban uh, that uh, use of that h cfcs refrigerant so the next is a low environmental impact that low environmental impact is most important parameter in case of the natural refrigerant so they uh, they have zero odp as well as zero gwp that is global warming potential so most of the country ban that uh, old refrigerant and now they continuously use that natural refrigerant and tremendous uh, research is going on that natural refrigerant in variety of the application in the foreign as well as indian uh, india indian country so the next is that high performance they have excellent thermodynamic property so the next is cost uh, competitiveness use of the natural refrigerant generally leads to lower operating cost due to less leakage lower maintenance requirement and better energy efficiency so the next is compatibility the natural refrigerant works well with the common used oil and fluids so this is the most important whatever the natural refrigerants are there it is compatible with the application of the aeronautical as well as oil industries in some um, industries like marine applications also they are used so there is no any harmful so these are the some limitations of the previous uh, refrigerant so it can be overcome by natural refrigerant here and these are the some speciality that uh, regulatory compliance then the low environmental impact high performance cost effectiveness and compatibility thank you so students in this particular uh, video we discuss variety of the refrigerant similar way uh, along with their benefits and disadvantages so also we discuss different refrigerant used in the variety of the applications along with their uh, benefits so students our next video will be on types of the air conditioning system thank you